Hi everyone, welcome back. It's been a while since I posted a video. I'm sorry it took, took a bit. I've, there's been other things that we've been sort of focusing on in the studio. Um, this one is a really fun little tutorial. We taught this class last week in, in my studio and it was a lot of fun. And since then, a lot of you have asked if I could show you. So this is what we're gonna be making. Um, this is what we did last week in the class with some fruit um, and in initial in the middle. Um, it's quite simple, we don't need a lot of materials and it's quite effective and it looks really nice when it's done. So uh, what we need are our watercolor paints. I'm gonna walk through some of the colors in a minute. Our brushes, watercolor paper. The one that I'm using here today, I've just cut down to about seven by seven inches. You can use whatever size you want. I'm going to take my light pencil here and just mark off the center. Um, around here, and then I want to do this so that I'm, I know I'm always working sort of in the middle. I don't want to end up with something at the end that is off to one side and then really difficult to frame or do anything with. So very lightly, I'm going to pencil in my midpoint and then moving around my page, I'm going to also mark off some borders so that I can easily place my letter in the middle. So typically with this type of project where you're painting around an object or around a figure that you don't want any paint on, um, you can use masking fluid. It's really hard for me to find masking fluid here in Mexico. Uh, I had some and then I ran out and then I, I'm not able to reorder some. So I'm waiting until I, I, can, I can do that. In the meantime, I'm going to be using washi tape. You can use any sort of gentle like paper paper friendly tape that's not going to tear. Um, but obviously if your letter is like has curves, it's gonna be difficult to do. So today I'm gonna to show you with a rectilinear letter, but if you are doing like a C or a D or anything like that, um, masking fluid is really the way to go. Otherwise you're kind of gonna be struggling a little bit to get that nice clean edge. So I've marked off, you might not be able to see it, but that's okay. I've marked off um, sort of a square where I'm gonna be working, where I'm gonna draw in my letter. So you can use a stencil um, I'm just gonna draw a little bit more of a border because I want my letter to be just a tad bit smaller. So I'm just going in and about, like on a seven by seven page like this, I am almost two inches, about an inch and a half in from each side. So I've got a nice border to draw in my florals or my fruit, and then I'm going to work and draw in my letter K. So this is my midpoint, so I'm going to just very lightly with my pencil draw in what my K is going to be kind of shaped. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but Keep in mind the width of your tape as well. Mine is a really narrow washi tape, so I'm gonna use a couple of layers. But you can see that here, I've got my, whoops, sorry, this way. Got my letter K, and I'm gonna go in with my washi tape. This one I think is 3 eighths. Um, and I'm gonna go in and just place it. I can. You can use an X-Acto knife to cut down, making sure you're not sort of cutting through your paper. Let me just move this up a little. Because it's super light, it's easy to actually do that, to score it. I'm gonna go in like that very lightly score that piece so I can pull it off. At this point it doesn't matter because you're overlapping the other one. top of my K and now I'm going to flip around. It's easier to work this side. And I'm like very ever so gently pressing on the X-Acto. 
exacto knife so that I'm not scoring the paper as well, um, depending on how sharp your knife is. But because this, like I said, this tape is so thin, it really is just a, a very gentle score. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut that actually like that so that I have that cut. Now, just gonna check because I'm seeing that these two parts are not quite the same and I want them to be, so I'm going to just go in and trim down so that they're the same length. Okay, and there's my K. Okay, once that's done, it's really important to go in and erase um, all your paper, all your um, lines, because once you go over them with watercolor, you won't be able to erase them. Go in and erase all my lines, especially the ones around your letter. Don't worry about the ones that are underneath your tape, because you'll be able to erase them. Obviously, once you remove your tape and your your painting is all dry. So I'm just using like an eraser pad. These are really nice. I, I've I learned to use them in, in architecture school. They're great for when we learned how to draft and they're really gentle so they don't pull or like smudge your paper because they're inside there's like all this little eraser bits instead of one rubber eraser. And so it's a lot gentler to work with and it doesn't, it doesn't smudge. It takes a little longer, but it's worth it. Okay, so once that's done, I'm just going to take this aside and get rid of all the little eraser bits. Okay, and I'm quite happy with that. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to work and just draw and sketch very lightly sort of where I want my sort of vegetation or my fruits. In this case, I'm gonna show you how to do like olive branches. So I'm going to just very gently kind of show or indicate where I want leaves and where I want olives. And this takes a little bit of time to get used to so that you're not gonna be painting or drawing over. So the less you the less you actually sketch in, the better, because you'll find it's gonna get a little bit tricky as you're working quickly to kind of um, work around the pencil marks. You don't wanna be painting over it. So this little bit is kind of lifting. So I have to be conscious of that. So I think I'm going to go this way. So I'm just very like gently indicating compositionally, like where I want things, where I want my olives and what direction I want my branches to go. And then I know I'm happy with that and I can fill that in as I go, uh, depending on how comfortable you are with Working on a blank piece of paper, you can add more, um, or if you're really comfortable doing this, you don't need to put anything in at all. But I like to add at least a little bit so that I know what I'm working towards. So I'm just gonna move these things aside. In terms of color, we're, we're gonna be working with, so we're doing olive green. So I'm gonna, this is the palette that I use. These are the paints that I typically use. So we're gonna be working in this range and in this range. So these are my, we're gonna be using sepia, and a little bit of perylene green to kind of get our bluey greens and then our brown greens or olive greens to create these colors. Um, we'll need a little bit of sap green to get this color. And then we're gonna also use a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre and Indian yellow to create some of these lighter like lime colors in, in some of the lighter leaves we're gonna be creating. So let's get our paints out. Um, I'm gonna show you yellow ochre. These ones, raw sienna, sap green, indigo for the bluey, kind of bluer tones in the olive, sepia, and parallel green, Payne's gray we might need. Um, oxide of chromium, maybe. My perylene green, perylene green, but that's okay. I won't be able to show it to you, but I do have it on my palette. Perylene green, it's this one here. 
and that's good for now. So I already have all these paints on my palette. If you don't, go ahead and put them onto a your palette, whatever you're using. Um, basically, we're gonna be working in my blues, my browns, my blacks, and my greens, and then some of the yellow that's here at the bottom. So all these are obviously already dry. That's fine. Obviously with watercolor, they dry up and then you reactivate them with water. So I'm gonna move that aside. For brushes, I'm going to be using my smaller brushes, my Princeton Neptune Round 4, and then I'm also gonna be using the Filbert Velvet Touch Princeton also in the 4. And then depending on some of the detail work, I may opt for a, a two or even less than that for some of the branches, but we'll see. We'll start with these two. Um, so let's get started. We're gonna work quickly because I want to make sure that my olives are going to be blending with my leaves in a really nice sort of soft way. So the way that I like to work this is that I like to work in bundles. So I like to place my leaves and then work around and put in my olives. The darker tones in the olives are gonna blend into the leaves and then move around the piece. The other alternative is that you place all your olives and then your leaves throughout. But I find unless you work really, really quickly, you're gonna run out of time and the olives are going to dry to a point where some of the darker pigments are not going to be able to move nicely into the lighter leaves, creating that nice flow of color. So let's start. I'm going to place my olives. So we've got two little glasses of water. I like to use two for my dirty water and my clean water. You can also have a little napkin or a towel nearby if you want to uh, remove water from your brush. So I've already gone in and created some of my colors. I'm gonna use this. This is like a sepia perylene green, which I have right here a lot of. And then I'm gonna darken that color. This is gonna be my darker hue in the olives. Then I'm gonna move along and I have like a sap green with a little bit of lemon yellow for like a lime, a lime color, a darker lime color. And then I also want a really light color that will have a lot of water for my leaves. And then what you're what we're what we're sort of aiming for is that our darker perylene green indigo blue and even sepia colors are going to blend nicely with our lighter colors and create like a really soft look. So once you've got those, so you should also have a little bit of sepia brown or um, whatever brown you're using handy because we're gonna start with creating some of the stems. So I'm gonna take some brown and I'm gonna work in this section here and I'm going to draw my branch. And then I've got an olive here, so I'm going to place that olive. And I'm not afraid to use a lot of pigment here because I know that my leaves are gonna pull some of this pigment off my olive. So again, I'm gonna take these two overlap, but I like the look of them when they don't always touch. And I leave a little bit of white space to create sort of like a highlight or a shadow. And then using your darker brown and that, that nice like indigo perylene brown, perylene green, sorry, and indigo color, I'm adding pigment to the olives. Now I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna pick up some water and I'm gonna go to that light color that we just created, this one here. And I'm going to go in and I'm gonna create a leaf that ever so slight will touch my olive. And then working towards the middle of that leaf, I'm gonna leave a little space to indicate the stem for the leaf. And then I'm gonna to go to the side and I'm gonna create another leaf. Don't overthink the leaves, just sort of place them. And you can see, you know, you're using your lighter, you can mid-tone green if you want to, or to place that one maybe in between and a smaller leaf, just like that. And then you just start filling that up. So putting a few more leaves, like so. 
I'm going to leave them a little indication of a stem. You can also add some dark and light spots to your leaves if you want that. I'm going to go into my brown here again. I'm going to draw another stem. Let me just take a look at it from this point of view. Actually, maybe, maybe here. Another stem. And I'm going to draw another leaf. You don't want to get too close to the edge of the page as well, because if you think once you remove your tape, you want to have a bit of a border. So I'm just going to keep adding different shades or hues of green the way you would sort of see them in, in nature. Like that. And once that dry, I may decide to put another olive, I'm not sure. So now I'm gonna work around, I think I'm gonna go this way. And I'm gonna create another stem, maybe this way. And then I'm gonna go back into that dark green, indigo, perylene green, and sepia color. I'm gonna draw a dark olive. I'm gonna actually let it touch the K because I know once I remove that I want that olive to kind of overlap a little. And then let's do another one. Maybe there. If you want, you can create lighter olives as well. It's really up to you. Like I'll do one here. Like so. And then I'm going to go in and again start with the leaves. This one is going to overlap a little, which is fine. And then let's draw a stem and another little maybe rounder leaf, like so. And you're just sort of working around. Don't worry too much about filling out all the little empty space, we're gonna take a look at it as a whole. And then if we need to, we can always add little smaller details to kind of create, to create volume. So that's my piece so far. I'm gonna go ahead and work through the rest of it and come back. I'm gonna show you a little closer view so that you can see the details. And then we're gonna take the tape off and see if it's missing anything. Okay, so I've gone in, completed my circle around my K. Now I'm gonna go in, kind of take a look, and I'm going to start drawing in a few kind of singular olives around my leaves, um, kind of lighter in color, a little bit more yellow, because not olives are the same. And I think it will add a little bit of interest. So I'm gonna go in and using my lemon yellow and my sap green, I'm gonna create a nice, light color and I'm gonna start by drawing my stems let's say we're gonna add one right here so I'm gonna go in with my brown draw a cute little stem like that clean my brush go into that lime yellow that I've just made and from the stem draw one. My stem probably needed a little bit more water so that it would bleed into. So I'm just going to go in and add and then I'm going to go back to my perylene green and add a little bit of depth by adding a bit of that color to and the bottom. In this way we're going to actually create more volume. I'm going to work and add a few closer to the K one there so that 
once I pull that tape off, it's gonna be very clear what's, what's left. And like that. And then you can kind of take that same brush and just add a few more kind of singular leaves if you want. Maybe there's one kind of on an angle. Like that. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry for just a few minutes. You can take your tape off before the piece is like completely dry, but if you have any wet pieces sort of around the, your letter, it's just messier if your fingers touch something or um, you pull off the tape where you don't want to. There's one more little curly one there. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry and I'll show you what that looks like once we start taking the tape off. Okay, so to do this step, using really clean hands, you're gonna take, like I have this edge here, it's kind of already peeling back. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna very gently remove my tape. Mine comes off really nicely. Depending on what tape you use, it might be a little trickier, but I love this tape for this reason. And I'm going to very gently remove it like that. And there's my letter K. Once it's fully dry, I'm gonna go in with that same eraser and remove all my pencil lines. I'll let you do the same. All right, so here's the finished piece on my end. I've gone in and erased the remaining lines. I think there's one more left that I have to get rid of, but in general, this is it. Uh, a few things that I think I would have done differently. I definitely would have made my border around my page a little wider. Sometimes you get carried away and then you realize as you're, as you're painting leaves in, that, oh, you've gotten quite close to the edge. It's okay, uh, this piece is still actually frameable, um, but I, I typically like to have a little bit more space to work with when I'm when I'm at the framer and sort of deciding on, on the spacing for the mat or the frame or, or both. What I do really like are some of these moments here, these darker olives and their pigment bleeding into and then also the water because we did the olives first and then we did the leaves second the water in the leaves made its way into the olive and if i'm gonna i'm gonna try to zoom in so you can really see you get these really nice sort of uh veiny veiny uh, patterns that occur that i really i really like that the other thing is the water from the leaves is pulling that pigment down into the leaf so you get you get these really soft transitions like that. So I really, that's one of my favorite things about watercolor and I love when, when that happens in a really soft, in a soft manner, especially when you're using greens and, and some of these colors, which are my favorites. If you attempt this tutorial and you create, you know, a version of your own, I would love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram at Donata Delano Art and I will reshare your post or your story. It's always nice to see how you guys take these tutorials, interpret them and make them your own. I'm going to be sharing a lot more watercolor tutorials in the, in the next month or two. Um, you guys love them and they're really accessible and easy for you to, to experiment with at home. So stay tuned. There'll probably be another one in two weeks, maybe less. And I will see you back here in a little bit. Thanks.